first, everything was calm. But then, something happened. Audio. On September 7th, Bitcoin became one of the two national currencies of El Salvador. This is a country where 70% of people don't have a bank account. If you have your cash under your mattress, then the likelihood of it being there the next day is probably pretty small. You're not going to be able to invest your money. You are barred from interacting with the global financial system. You can't have a debit card. You don't have a credit card. You can't make purchases online. Bitcoin was one of the solutions to this problem. In fact, it goes even further than that. 20% of the GDP of El Salvador comes from people working overseas and sending the money back. Companies like Western Union facilitate these remittances and charge a fee. These fees add up. The Bitcoin beach where I have traveled in the past has shown that people who have accepted Bitcoin in their small community have had better financial outcomes, even just saving a tiny proportion of the money they're making in Bitcoin. So there's a lot of great reasons and a lot of great promise with Bitcoin in El Salvador. But with everything in life, there's always nuance. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the darker side of Bitcoin in El Salvador. Now to understand Bitcoin in El Salvador, the first thing that we need to do is talk about President Naib Bukele. President Bukele is celebrated on Twitter. He has a pretty big following. He is in many ways like a celebrity in the cryptocurrency world. Now Bitcoin first came to El Salvador from an American who went down to the beach in El Zante and donated money in the form of Bitcoin to help the community. And I did an entire video about my experience visiting that beach prior to this video, which you can find up here. I highly recommend that you watch that first because it gives a little bit of background to why people like President Bukele were first interested and introduced to Bitcoin. Now at the Bitcoin conference in Miami last year, Nayi Bukele made a presentation where they were going to accept Bitcoin as a national currency. I believe Bitcoin could be one of these ideas. That is why next week, I will send to Congress a bill that will make Bitcoin a legal tender in El Salvador. In the short term, this will generate jobs and help provide financial inclusion to thousands outside the formal economy. And in the medium and long term, we hope that this small decision can help us push the million of this kind of Bitcoin. What I want to do now is go through some of Naib Bukele's behavior as far as running his country, as far as some of the decisions that he's made while he's been in office. I feel like this is genuinely important because to understand the grievances and the mistrust of Bitcoin in El Salvador, which you will see in this video, it's important to understand where that's coming from. We're going to start back on February 9th of 2020. Naib Bukele and 40 heavily armed soldiers and police marched into the opposition-controlled legislature. His point in doing this was to have his Congress approve a loan, an international loan that he wanted. Once inside, Bukele made his way and sat down on the chair reserved for the president of the legislature, not for him, and made this statement. I think it is now very clear who is in charge of this situation. He then paused to say a silent prayer, got up and made his way to leave and made one more veiled threat. You have one week, gentlemen, one week. Unfortunately, this kind of behavior continued. Here's a quote from Al Jazeera regarding the treatment of people in the country suffering from COVID. With the onset of the corona pandemic, these evolved to encompass things like throwing thousands of perceived violators of the quarantine into unsanitary containment centers, which naturally quickly became COVID hotspots. Here's a shocking image that looks like it was taken in Abu Ghraib. These are prisoners in El Salvador who are put uh, almost fully nude, just wearing underwear, pressed body to body in the height of the coronavirus pandemic. Hemos tomado la decisión de mezclar 
They will not receive sunlight. They will be in total confinement 24 hours a day in the seven maximum security prisons that are in this country. This was an order from President Nayib Bukele. We are complying with that order. Sadly, images like these were celebrated by President Bukele's press office as they were tweeted out. Next was another incident which really shook a lot of people up and that was the spontaneous removal of five chief justices in their country. President Bukele tweeted about this saying, and the people of El Salvador, through the representatives, said dismissed. Jose Vivanco, the executive director of the Human Rights Watch, had this to say, Bukele is breaking with the rule of law and seeks to concentrate all power in his hands. Uh, Bukele's own party uh, placed these judges with their own political party's chief justices, concentrating the power into one party. The, the justices were removed and new justices were put in place with haste. In fact, the chief justices were driven to their post in a convey of police officers, including one man named Mauricio Arraza. Sorry for pronunciation. Arraza himself is under investigation for obstructing a corruption probe against high-level government officials. President Bukele had this to say to our friends in the international community, we want to work with you, trade, travel, get to know each other and help when we can. Our doors are more open than ever, but with all due respect, we are cleaning our house and this is none of your business. This is complicated though, because El Salvador had a tough and dangerous past. With Nayib Bukele becoming the president, a lot of issues such as some of the violence and the heavy crime, the murder, has really tailed off. There have been wonderful improvements under Nayib Bukele. There's a whistleblowing newspaper called El Faro in El Salvador, which was, uh, according to Bukele, laundering money. Bukele made this announcement with no supporting evidence, and it came a few weeks after El Faro reported that President Bukele had negotiated with MS-13, the country's largest and violent gang. The legislation then undermined the independence of the body charged with ensuring access to information and disbanded the Secretariat of Transparency and Anti-Corruption, which is one of the main agencies charged with the oversight of public spending. Most concerning is the fact that in the country of El Salvador, there is a constitution that does not permit the president to be president for more than one term. Bukele and his team are now constructing a new constitution that will allow him to remain in power. So that's it for this little introduction. Again, I think it is important that you have seen a small cutting of some of the behaviors that the president of El Salvador has displayed. With that said, let's go back to September 6th, when I arrived in El Salvador for the second time to experience the country as it shifted to use Bitcoin as a national currency. All right, does this part of the video look familiar? Uh, I'm back in El Salvador. I'm here to cover Bitcoin becoming the national currency or one of the two national currencies. What do people really think about Bitcoin becoming the national currency here? I want to find out myself. I don't want to trust the media. I don't want to trust Reddit. I don't want to trust YouTubers. Although I guess I'm a YouTuber, so you know, take that with a grain of salt. But I want to find out for myself what is actually going on here. And you guys will get to follow along. So I'm very thankful for that. Here we go, the El Salvador adventure begins again. Are you ready for part two? No. As we're driving along, you'll see people on both sides of the road. As you can see, you know, Joanne asked a good question. You know, these people on the side of the road, are they going to be accepting Bitcoin? I'm gonna do my best, just like before, to give my experience. My experience could be different from yours, and that's why I recommend, if you really wanna find out what's going on in the world, to actually go out into the world and see it yourself. It's very easy to form very concrete opinions. When you're sitting in your luxury resort in Miami, you wanna have an opinion, you should go out and forge it. Nice little music montage now as we go back to the hotel that we stayed in last time here in San Salvador. I'll give my opinion about things and then we'll go out tomorrow on the Bitcoin day and see what's really going on.
So the first day here is just kind of like the B-roll day, walking around getting shots of all the, you know, city and stuff like that. And it's super hot, so we went into the store here, this little health food store, and the woman there uh, lived in America for, I think, 15 years total, 10 to 15 years. And I told her why I'm here in Colombia. It's to make videos about Bitcoin and what people think. And she said, be careful. And I said, how come? And she said, well, just be careful what you say about Bitcoin while you're here. And I said, because of the higher ups? And she says, yeah. Uh, she said, people are very afraid to say what they think. I asked her what she thinks about Bitcoin. She says, I don't know. I don't know if I'll need to accept it. I don't know if I'm required to accept it. And I don't know how to ac accept it. So, you know, we have Reddit, people on Reddit that are talking about how great the Bitcoin law is and how this is a historic day. And meanwhile, people here are literally afraid to ask questions, to speak. But it's very sad to me that people here are scared to just have an open conversation. And, you know, this, this isn't like some local girl. We're in San Benito, right? This is the middle, the wealthy part of town. Beautiful with massive beer stations and Starbucks. This woman is highly educated from the United States and she has no idea what's going on with the Bitcoin here. Now, by the way, you might be wondering why that woman that I talked about at the health food store was so cautious about speaking her mind. She didn't want to be on camera. Well, it's because just days before a Bitcoin dissident was actually arrested in the country. His name was Mario Gomez. He was arrested without a warrant after criticizing the implementation of Bitcoin. This arrest came just before Bitcoin Bitcoin becoming the national currency of El Salvador and was highly effective at getting people to shut up. On my channel, I actually did a video up here interviewing people about Bitcoin in El Salvador. I posted on the Bitcoin subreddit about this arrest the day that it occurred. Important to remember, that was not the reason he was arrested. And in fact, he was arrested without a warrant. That post was, again, labeled as misleading, then was set for posting the, uh, the news. It is worth noting that I reached out to the moderation team at r slash Bitcoin. I requested clarification on why I was banned. I was not given clarification. However, the ban was lifted. I am able to post in it. There is a wallet app for people to use in El Salvador called Chivo that was being developed. It was supposed to come out September 7th, day of the protest, where everyone in the country would get $30 worth of Bitcoin on their phone, no strings attached, and the app would work no strings attached. You'd be able to buy your groceries, you'd be able to buy your eggs and your bread using Bitcoin with the Chivo app, which was developed through financing of the El Salvadorian government. But let's just get into the next day where I go to the protest and try to access and use Chivo for the first time. Good morning, guys. I'm at the Nico Urban Hotel. <laughs> this place is beautiful. Uh, this morning, it's gonna be calm and nice before the absolute chaos of the day, which is coming. Apparently, there's over five protests. Something like 8.30 in the morning right now. Gonna have a quick breakfast, and then we're gonna go see the protests. We're gonna see what's going on. But again, starting with this beautiful, quiet, calm hotel breakfast. Today, the Bitcoin law goes into effect and we're already finding problems. I woke up to read the news and it turns out that the Chivo app is dead. No one can use it. It's off the app store. It's not working. There's technical problems. The Salvadorian president tweeted and told everyone to be patient. I found a Reddit post by a El Salvadorian who told me to be very careful. They're cracking down on journalists. So I actually removed all my Twitter. One of the things that I've been noticing is that people online, especially big Bitcoin supporters, can't fathom the reason why people would be against Bitcoin here. It seems like such an obvious win. But again, right now, just gonna have some breakfast, enjoy this beautiful day. It's so nice to be in El Salvador. I really do love this country. And about an hour from now, we're gonna get into the heavy stuff. We're gonna get into going to the protests, seeing what people are actually saying. And hopefully, I'm hoping the Chivo app is up before my 72 hours are up. That would be really a shame. So uh, cross your fingers, guys. I might have to book a longer stay, cancel my flight, stay more than 72 hours. We're gonna, we're gonna find out how things go. By the way, you'll notice at the beginning of the video I gave a shot at the New York Times. Uh, the reason is to date the video and show that I'm really here on September 7th. Uh, isn't it amazing, by the way, that the New York Times, one of the most prestigious news sources in the world, doesn't have anything about El Salvador 
and the Bitcoin law on their front page at all. Even if I scroll down, there's nothing here. It's like some of the biggest news in technology ever, maybe since, you know, the printing press and it's just totally absent. All right, heading out. We are at where the protest is happening. People are here with uh, no Bitcoin. You can see the news vans. Got Herson, my second camera guy, and uh, obviously Joanne, so. And the third camera person. So here we go. A lot more than uh, 20 to 30 people, that's for sure. Noel Bitcoin. Noel Bitcoin, they're screaming. We're gonna make our way on top of the statue here and what some of the signs here say. A lot of media, a lot of news, a lot of cameras. It's actually refreshing to see how many people here are not afraid to speak their mind. <laughs> she was very sassy at me. Here's the protest, but right over on our left, there is the official government building. So there's soldiers over here, not very many, but a few. Uh, and there looks like they're doing some kind of government demonstration of, of the app. So uh, there's official Chivo and the press is over there. People are taking pictures of it. Yeah, there's the official Chivo back there. All right, now it's time to take the drone up and get some shots. So I'm going to go over here where it's a little more quiet and lift off. And then her son over here is going to start interviewing people, finding out why they feel so strongly. The statue over here has graffiti all over it. I've seen some drones in the air. The police are walking around taking photographs of all the graffiti. This is the Chivo area. So it looks like there's people here with badges and they're showing how to use the Chivo app, I think. But of course, no one is there. So here. You can't use the Chivo app right now. It's down, having technical problems. Drone just flew over me, a Mavic. Explosions behind me, as you can hear. There's all kinds of signs. Everyone's in the road, as you can see. People are just walking in circles around this square, which is shutting down all of the traffic. I really don't know how to get an accurate gauge of how many people are here, but I think it's pretty laughable that what I've seen online says 20 to 30 people. No. Now I was at some of the protests in uh, Thailand to document it. Now there's uh, a lot more violence in Thailand, but you know, the police are just kind of walking around documenting all the spray paint, all the graffiti. I see them taking a lot of pictures. I don't see them really shutting this protest down. Funny enough, I don't even really see police forming barricades or anything that you'd normally see in a protest. The people here are pretty free to do what they want. But right now, no problem. People are walking around saying what they feel. As we're walking up the street with all the protesters, people are spray painting no Bitcoin all down the road, the entire way. All right, we're back here at the hotel. Look at that sunburn coming in. Uh, we just left the protest and the very last moment of the protest her son over here, who's helping me film all of this, was able to download his Chivo app. So we're gonna go to a cafe or something and try the Chivo app out and see what's actually going on. They make lemonade here with peppermint in it, and it's so good, basil and peppermint. All right, so here's the thing. Just had a really nice lunch at Deli Cat here in San Salvador. Now, what we're gonna do is get the Chivo app. We have our friend over here who's gonna download it and use it. He's never used it, he has no idea how it works, and we're just gonna experiment and see what you can and can't do because there's a lot of rumors flying around about how it works, but so far I've never seen anyone actually use it, which makes sense because it's brand new. So uh, we're gonna check that out now. We are open it and uh, we are going to register the number. I will. He's gonna put in his phone number. Some of the stuff here might be a little censored for obvious reasons. So he's verifying it now. I can type. <laughs> so it's broken. <laughs> like most things from the government, it doesn't work. <laughs> so you have to type in your government ID? Yes. Okay. So this is verifying that you're actually a citizen, that you're yeah. who you say you are. Okay. All right. So he put in all of his information and now 
you're gonna put in a pin to keep your app locked. Yeah. All right, pin is in. Waiting. We've been waiting a while now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now it wants a picture of your face. Yeah. It wants a facial scan. Oh. So you got your photo, your verification picture. What else does it want? <laughs> it's so slow, yeah, because it's new. Because, uh -huh. Many people are on it at the same time. I got my $30. Oh, Bitcoin. great, so you got your $30. Yeah. Okay, so you have two balances. You have your USD balance here, and you have your BTC, Bitcoin, balance right here. What is it like to transfer between USD and BTC? And also, are you able to send your BTC off of this wallet onto a regular one. And as we're, we're speaking here, there's lots of pastries and stuff coming in. Check this out. Oh, first off, see if you can... I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't let you, right? All right, so hit confirm. Now you gotta put in your pin. You forget it already, Hersan? <laughs> yeah. You forget your pin? All right, so you're confirming. I don't know what to say. Timed out, right? Yeah. So you were unable to transfer. So let's try something else. We're gonna try you giving me Bitcoin. I'm gonna give you a wallet and I want you to try to send $5 Bitcoin to it. Okay. And we're gonna see if people can get money out of their Chivo wallet. One of those buttons is for send, yeah. BTC. So go ahead and try scanning this code and see if you can send money to it. The app is so comically slow. It's so <laughs> slow. Oh. oh, okay. So try sending five dollars. It's not working, is it? It can't? All right, so there you go. He is not able to send Bitcoin from Chivo to my wallet. Does not work. All right, just to be sure, I'm going to try a different wallet. I'm going to try the um, Mun wallet. Uh, I'm actually going to try Lightning and do an invoice and for the amount, I'm gonna do, let's say, $1. So there we go. Um, there's a guy named Sterling who watches me, and I, I watch him, he has a YouTube channel also, and he's a really nice guy, so he advised me to try this. So this is uh, Lightning, and we're gonna see if he's able to use Lightning to send me a dollar with the government Chivo app. Wow, okay, so apparently they, he can't send me any less than $5. Wow, that's scary, especially because some people live on just a few dollars a day. If you want to buy a bread or the eggs in the store, you need to send $1. Okay, so uh, fine, let's try $6. If I edit this, you're not gonna understand just how long this is. We're still waiting. Well, you know, it, it's hard to judge because this is the launch, this is the first day. Things go wrong on launches, first days there can be problems. You know, who knows what issues they're having on the back end. Theoretically, this is something you would expect to be solved after a couple days. All right, so it's just not working at all. And that's not a mistake. I'm pretty sure the reason is, based on what I'm reading on Twitter right now, is that the first $30 of Bitcoin you get for free, you actually can't get out of the network until you send it to another Chivo wallet because they want people within the network to use it before you get it out of the network. To test that hypothesis, our friend over here is gonna pay for lunch. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll reimburse, don't worry. He'll pay for lunch. And then after he pays for lunch, we'll see if we can then send money out of his Chivo wallet. All right, now it's time for you to pay for lunch. Now to do that, <laughs> the bill's too high. It's more than $30. So I'm gonna send you some uh, BTC and you can use that to pay. So go into your Chivo wallet and then hit receive. And then I'm gonna try to send you some BTC. Go to receive if you can, uh, BTC. And we're gonna try to send, let's try $20 and see if that goes through, okay. I was able to send him uh, lightning from my phone to his phone, uh, which now shows up as BTC. So he got the $20 that I sent him. To send him $20 over lightning was only a fee of three pennies. So not too bad, that's pretty reasonable. So anyway, now you have, well, nothing. You still just have $30 because the 20 I sent him is still not confirmed. So I don't know how long that takes, but uh, his balance still shows as $30. So first impressions are not very good. It, it's not working. He's not able to get money out. I don't know if that'll change after he's gone to a few places. Uh, and the app is incredibly slow. Again, how much of that is just because it's the first day? I 
I just don't know. At this point, I've put in $21 into Hersan's Chivo account. So I should be able to get at least $1 out of it because I understand they don't want you to spend the first $30. Of course, they don't tell you that, it just doesn't work, which bad impl implementation. But anyway, let's try to send $1 from his wallet to my regular wallet. Scan a QR code. So now I'm gonna scan my Bitcoin BTC QR code. There we go, scanned it. It's very slow, so hopefully it, it comes through. But once it does, we'll see if we can send a dollar. $1, confirm. Okay, so the money I sent to you before went through, but you still can't. I can't. So you're still locked out from sending money. Okay, again, uh, I put a bunch of BTC in his wallet. He's gotten access to it. I think we're gonna verify that now, but uh, still cannot send it out even though we put money in. Uh, I think now it's just you know not working, but I think we're gonna have to try to spend it somewhere. I came to find out that in the case of the Chivo app, uh, that $30 was locked, but if you put in additional money on top of that $30, you could get that out. Sometimes, most of the time, it would just Fail. In fact, myself, I put in $10 into Hersan's wallet above the 30 at one point and sent it to myself. And that money to this day, <laughs> recording this, what is it, November 8th, still hasn't arrived. Now, I struggled so much during this that I ended up calling a guy named Sterling who has his own lightning node. And we were able to send him some money as you're about to see now. Oh, it did work. It went through? Yep. Non-custodial, $5.10 sent over lightning. So I just received it to my Zap on my node. That's awesome. So as you can see, uh, in this case, the money went through, but one thing that was not clear to me at the time is that that $5 minimum was actually intentional. So that lasted for weeks. You weren't able to spend any amount under $5. Don't know why. Now that restriction has been removed. It's exactly what you would hope. People should be able to use the currency like currency. So now you actually can. While I was at the protest, before we were playing with the Chivo app, I decided to get some drone shots. So I lifted off my drone, got some shots of people protesting, landed it, downloaded the footage onto my phone while I was at the protest, and I uploaded the drone shots right then and there, starting to discover some of the influencers in El Salvador, discover my tweet, and there's just a explosion that comes from it. All right, so look at this, guys. Right now, I'm in El Salvador, as you guys know. Who is this scumbag? <laughs> He's a, a YouTuber. He wants to be in the party with with Nayib Bukele, but they don't they don't want him because he's it's like that a liar. Hey, uh, Jose Valdez, I'm calling you out. March has nothing to do with Bitcoin. I'm there. I'm not just some random gringo sitting at home resharing videos. Politics is, of El Salvador. People like him telling liars. Hassan tried to pay for the food at Deli Cat, didn't work. Again, we were able to get $5 off, send it to Sterling, but we weren't able to get $5 off to send to me. We weren't able to get money to send and pay Chivo to Chivo to the uh, restaurant. So we decided that we would try another place, Starbucks, and I would also try with my own phone. Bitcoin. So look at that. Now you can get Starbucks. The Starbucks has Bitcoin now. So we can spend Bitcoin here and see if it works. Mango dragon fruit, grande. And do you want anything, man? Yeah, yeah. Okay, you get something too. So when you order here, the menu shows you how many Satoshis the drink costs. So it says $1, 1,930 sats, or 0 0.00001930 <laughs> Bitcoin. So we'll go to send. All right, now we'll try lightning. All right. Okay, so there you go. I spent my BTC in the form of lightning and uh, pay for Starbucks with it. No gift card, just natively. That's pretty cool. And there's <laughs> pink drink to go with it. I was able to use my Mun or Moon wallet to buy something here at Starbucks. Uh, now we're gonna have him try to do it with his Chivo app to see if they can actually buy stuff. Right now, today, it's probably not gonna work because there's so many issues. Don't have a formed opinion based on whether this experiment works or not because I think they're just having tons of server issues, but it's still worth trying. Are you ready to be the first person yeah. <laughs> on YouTube okay. to spend money with the Chivo app? Let's see if it works. Okay. All right, so you got your app loaded up. I hope this works. So now they're learning how to do it. So there's the Chivo app being used. We have to spend $1 or more, uh, $5 or more. Yeah. So you can't use your TiVo app to send Bitcoin unless it's more than $5? Yeah. 
even at a restaurant. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. Um, that is a total surprise. So what's going on? We have to wait. The app isn't working? Yeah. No, it's not working. We are going to wait. All right, so a few updates. Really disappointing. First off, you can't use the app and send Bitcoin for less than $5. It just doesn't work. I feel right now the way I did in my El Zante video where I just feel frustrated. It just doesn't work the way it's supposed to. Like, why can he spend less than $5? Why does it have to be $5 and one cent? Why can't he just use it? It doesn't make any sense to me. And it's inside the network. It's not like there's any fees, right? They're using the Chivo app, right? Yeah. So they're using the Chivo app, the merchant side Chivo app. So it's not like there's any fee. It just, it's really disappointing that this doesn't work the way it's supposed to work. But then again, I understand that the technology is new. I understand that Lightning does have a lo lot of great properties and so does Bitcoin. So this isn't really an issue of what crypto they're using. It's an issue with the rules that they're setting for the app. He's been trying over and over. We've been here like 30 minutes waiting no, for him to spend money with the Chivo app. No, not working. I have to pay in uh, oh, cash. Cash. Yeah. All right. So we're having to pay with our credit card because the Chivo app doesn't work. He is not able to pay at all. Today's been a weird day, guys. Very weird day. I'm going to be posting up tonight a video on my Twitter showing more angles so you can see just how many people there were. And I'm going to do a count. I'm going to count how many people were actually at the protest. At Starbucks, he can't buy anything with Bitcoin, with Lightning for less than $5. So he gets extra food so we can show how it works. And he gets $5.30 of food. And we're in there for like 30 minutes waiting for it to go through and it just failed. So we ended up paying in cash anyway. This is the first day. First day launches are tough. We know that they did not have very much time to develop this app. It was a rush job. It was a hack job. This is a broken app that does not work the way that it should work. It was released too soon. The law was too quick. People don't understand how to use this. People don't understand what it is. People aren't even able to use it. People online, which, you know, is nothing special to El Salvador. People are going to be toxic everywhere you go. But the people online here on, on Twitter and Reddit that are defending this, especially the people that are really into Bitcoin, um, why are you guys jumping on to defend this when you have never used it, when you never experienced it? We didn't even know if people would get access to their own funds. We didn't even know if people could transfer stuff off. Now we do. We have confirmation that you can. But we didn't know. So why are we defending it. I still am optimistic. I still am hopeful. I still think Bitcoin will be a net positive for people in this country. But I am very disappointed in how it was rolled out. I'm disappointed in the execution. I'm disappointed with people's reaction online. I need a drink. This video, this part of the video was filmed on September 7th. On September 10th, there was a tweet made by a very influential, very large crypto influencer that you probably have heard of. His name is Peter McCormack. Now, I was on Twitter and I saw what he posted and I want to give you the story to illustrate to you what the larger view of cryptocurrency and Bitcoin in El Salvador was. He is a great example because he has so many followers and so many people look to him as a source of verifiable, useful, and honest information about cryptocurrency and Bitcoin in El Salvador and in other places too. In fact, he was talking with Mark Cuban recently about his experience, but anyway, with Peter McCormack and with people on Reddit and with just the, the crypto community in general. The view was that Bitcoin in El Salvador just worked. There were no protesters. It was like 20 or 30 people. This was the narrative. And you have to understand that me being down there, I was this kind of thorn in everyone's side because I was showing what was actually occurring there. And it was harder for people to simply dismiss me the way so many others would be dismissed because I am a fan of Bitcoin. I love Bitcoin and I hold Bitcoin BTC in my portfolio. So it's not like I'm this guy who just hates crypto and I'm trying to make crypto look bad. I genuinely want Bitcoin to succeed, but I also am happy to show what's actually going on. He was using his own app. He's a foreigner who's coming in, who's not using the Chivo app and he's making these microtransactions. Every single one of these transactions, had he been using the Chivo app would have failed. Bitcoin would not have been convenient. Bitcoin would have been a novelty. And this information from Peter and people like him was what was being disseminated into places like Reddit, communities like Reddit, was disseminating into Twitter 
and into the crypto space in general. All right, so I think the reason is, well, first off, there's a big misinformation campaign here. There are people that are connected with some kind of political party, and I don't know anything about them or what their political party or views are, and I don't care, I don't wanna know. Uh, but they have big followings, and they just parrot back misinformation to try to confuse people. Again, I've already talked about that. They said that my video, this video that you're gonna watch here showing the protest literally just didn't happen. They're saying that, and they have like 50,000 followers. And because I'm an outsider and I'm not giving an opinion, I'm just showing what's happening, people are going nuts. They're like resharing this, tweeting me and thanking me. For example, this guy saying, Mark, thank you for caring about what Salvadorians actually want to express. Yeah, well, okay, this is a surviving 72 hours. But the funny thing about that is, well, first off, it is 72 hours. We got here yesterday and started filming all the B-roll and stuff. But the other thing is, this actually is surviving because I'm actually making a lot of people very angry at me. And I also made a tweet that is, is pretty mean and it also happens to be pretty funny. It is a good insult, you have to admit. I'm gonna download all my footage on my cards. Uh, I wanna get an accurate count of how many people were at the protest, because that's a big area of contention. And I'm gonna post it uh, on Twitter in an hour and see what happens, so. Actually, that's a good question. Why do so many people care how many people are at the, at the protest? Because Bukele wants to always say he, he has everyone with him, and the oppositors are like a few people, uh, a few crazy people. The opposition are just 30 or so crazy people that are upset about a judge. You know, it's not, it's not about Bitcoin, yeah, man. It's not Bitcoin. All right, Joe just found a really interesting post from a guy who's in El Zante right now and is talking about his experience. He said they traveled to El Zante to see what's going on. He said that they met plenty of people who are fans of Bitcoin as a way to put aside money because they don't have a bank account. But in everyday transactions, Bitcoin is a pain because it's so volatile. He said that he talked to a survey instructor and he said that at the end of the day when he looked at what he got paid for a class, the value already dropped because Bitcoin goes up and down all the time. That means that people, when they save a small amount in their wallet, it just disappeared because it could just crash. He also said economists also told us not to expect too much brick and mortar investment in El Salvador, but expect more computer-based Bitcoin investors and also criminals <laughs> <laughs> who see an unregulated currency as a good way to launder some money. There's people on Twitter who are in some way let's just say they're politically motivated. I, I've already gone through the spiel, guys. You know what's going on. So um, <laughs> what I did is I took all the tweets of people lying and I edited them into a video with the footage that I recorded today. So you see them saying like, yeah, there's no people here. And then all these people. Then I have this uh, part where it's like, yeah, there was no Bitcoin protest. And then all this Bitcoin protest. This is really hilarious. So Joe, I'm actually gonna show you and let you react to it. And then I'm gonna post it on Twitter and we're gonna see what the reaction is. So three, two, one. <laughs>
That's a proverb from the Bible that says that people who lie will be burning in hell. Yeah. <laughs> That's the video I edited. I'm gonna post it on Twitter and Reddit right now. Can you just say you won't post on Twitter like yesterday? Yes. And you tell people don't contact you on Twitter? Yes. And who is lying now? Look, the wave is here and I'm riding it. All right, so I put up the post. <clears throat> Uh, I'm tagging the people who are in my video who are lying, and uh, it's pretty much ready to go. So let's post it up. Here we go. Three, two, one. Boom. All right, there's a lot of like crazy social media stuff going on, obviously. I I've said before, I'm not against Bitcoin. I'm pro-Bitcoin. I believe genuinely that Bitcoin will be ultimately good for this country. Uh, what I don't like is some of the things we talked about today. It's frustrating to me that the app didn't work. Fair enough, it's a new app. It's frustrating to me that you can't make lightning purchases l for less than $5. I don't like that the app doesn't let you use the money how you want, and it doesn't tell you you can't use it in certain ways, it just breaks, right? There's no warning that says, hey, the $30 we're giving you, you can't use in certain ways. It's not in the app, there's no text about it at all. You know, one of the tweets that I got is, you know, we're not against Bitcoin, we're not against the technology, we're against the implementation of it are connected with the dictator. What? They're gonna see that. What? You guys need to leave there. We're leaving soon. You're leaving in two days. Yeah, on Thursday. Yeah. Okay, well, if he ends up in jail, do you think you're gonna end up in there with him? Probably not. He won't end up right? in jail. You don't think so? No. Do you know anything about El Salvador? And if he ends up in jail, he'll be lucky rather than shot. <laughs> I don't know why you think it's funny. It's so irresponsible. So it's getting kind of crazy. Some guy on YouTube who is an El Salvador influencer just posted my video. I didn't really understand why people are protesting today and why they don't like Bitcoin so much. Someone just tweeted the real problem that people have with Bitcoin. And listen to this. People are upset because Bukele is using government money that could alleviate many of the Salvadorian needs, medicine, education, roads, and investment. Bukele is taking money from the government to make the app, to buy Bitcoin, to do all these things. And people feel like that money would be better spent on infrastructure, on medicine, on social programs. Um, and again, like my role here isn't really to agree or disagree. Um, it's just to say what people think, because when you read online, it's always, oh, they're just uneducated. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know anything about Bitcoin. It's like, uh, okay, it's more sophisticated than that. A lot of people do understand what's going on at a higher level than people on Reddit because they actually live here. Um, you know, personally, I, I think that, again, and I've said this many times and my, my view hasn't changed, I think overall Bitcoin is probably good for the country. I think that in the long run, it's probably a good use of money, but it's not for me to say. Uh, that's my opinion and I'm not a local, this isn't my country, but uh, I think it's important to understand why people are responding the way they're responding and not just chalk it up to people being uneducated or brushing it off or creating straw men arguments. There's reasons why people have these strong feelings and I think it's important that they have a voice to say it. People are now posting my video on Instagram as reels. That's my video, they put music on top of it. Wow. Look at this, it's all blue here. They're getting ready for some event for some wallet, Bitcoin wallet called Kuva. I, I don't know what that is. We were walking out and I saw that. I was like, I gotta grab my camera. All right, we're gonna get some dinner. Look, a lot has happened. So much, I can't put it into words right now. We're actually here for 72 hours. We're gonna be here another week, actually longer than a week. The Bitcoin dissident who got arrested, I got in contact with him. I found out that the Chivo app doesn't allow users to withdraw amounts that are smaller than $5 and even use it internally as lightning where there should be no fees anyway. All of this is not adding up. There's so much going on and so much has changed that I need a break. And we're gonna go to a nice little town called Sukitoto. I think that's how you pronounce it. Beautiful little colonial town, a couple hours away from San Salvador. I don't think the pupusa is here anymore. Oh my God. It's this bar looking thing. Where are we gonna <laughs> get our pupusa? I just want pupusa.
I needed a vacation, so I decided to go to Suji Toto. But before I went, I decided that I would first record two informational videos that were done in Spanish. What's important to realize when it comes to the Chiva wallet is that the Bitcoin in the wallet is not held by people. It's held on behalf of people by the government. When a user has, let's say, $10 worth of Bitcoin in his Chivo government wallet, what it really means is that the government owes him $10 worth of Bitcoin that he theoretically can take out. This is going to get into big topics, which we can talk about later, but long story short, the Bitcoin that the government is holding, that is buying, is not public. No one can see the wallet and see that the funds are actually in there. You can understand why this would be scary. There's an awful lot of trust that goes into keeping your money in the Chiva wallet. And frankly, it goes against the entire tenet of cryptocurrency, which is verify, don't trust, which is keep the keys yourself, right? They're not your keys, it's not your crypto. This would be like the equivalent of a one-party government system coming to you and taking the keys to your physical house. And whenever you need to open or close your doors, you just have to, you know, ask the State Department to come down and open it for you. So my thought was, well, I'm here, I might as well record a video in Spanish telling people how to get the money off of Chivo onto their own private wallet, notwithstanding the fact that the $5 minimum existed and most transactions going from Chivo out of Chivo simply just failed, but at least it would be a start. So that's exactly what I did. Now, <laughs> this video would be another two hours long if I played both of those videos. I highly recommend that you watch them. They do have English as well as Spanish. In the world of Bitcoin, if you don't own the key to your Bitcoin, you don't own the money. In the Chivo app, you will not have control of your own keys to your own Bitcoin. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take your Bitcoin out of Chivo and put it into your own wallet where you control the money in it. There are benefits of the Chivo app, such as being able to convert your Bitcoin into USD. But again, you don't control it. Pero de nuevo, no los puedes controlar. In one video, I train people how to use the Bitcoin.com wallet, which is my favorite go-to wallet because it has the two cryptos that I use, Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. And I made a second video training people how to use the Moon or Mun wallet, which has lightning on it. And the reason that's important is because in El Salvador, although there are ATMs and you can get Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash out of places easily, most people down there through Strike, through the Bitcoin Beach app, and through Chivo will interface easily with the Mun wallet because again, it has lightning. Here is a clip of my frustration the day that I was recording the training videos. I'm here with her song. And I'm really struggling. I, I didn't intend to vlog today. I was gonna vlog once I get to Tuki Toto, I think it's called. Suchitoto. Suchitoto. And I needed Hassan to come here to demonstrate on video how to take money out of your Chivo app into your Mun wallet, your Moon wallet. We've been here, it's now over 30 minutes. The Chivo app just doesn't let it go through. You can see the $10 is pending and nothing's happening. The MUN wallet shows a balance of $0. It doesn't even see that it's coming in. The amount is $10, so that's over the $5 limit. And, and that's a whole nother thing. Sending Chivo to another Chivo app in Lightning is blocked if the amount is le less than $5. Now I am being harsh. That's because I'm upset. I'm sitting here on this couch, glued, waiting for this transaction in Lightning that people tell to me is instant. On day one, we were able to send over $5, $5 and like a penny to uh, Sterling. And it worked then. He was at a restaurant trying to buy something, a drink, and he tried to pay. Is he just expected to sit there an hour or more? Do we even know if it will ever go through? Is the money just burned? It's just really sad. And here's another thing. Maybe I wanna see and make sure and confirm that I sent it to the right address. Maybe I made the mistake. Look. You can't even click it to see what the address that it's going to is. There's no information. So even if it was my fault and I put in the wrong address, there's literally no way to tell. I was blowing up on Twitter at this point. Things were getting crazy. So I went to a city. But when I got to Suji Toto, I found out that the Chivo app uh, employees were there and I actually got recognized. Right now I'm in a town called Suji Toto with Joanne. And you can see we have these flags and that's because behind me, uh, these guys walking around are working for Chivo. They're working for the government. And it looks like they're training people here how to use the uh, Chivo app. We can see right back here, there's uh, a young woman 
who is teaching them how to do it. It's so funny because Joanne and I came here to kind of get away from social media and we we're gonna do just a normal travel vlog, you know, checking out this town. But of course, we come here in the morning to the town square and there's Chivo app people, government people, everywhere. The workers that gave us the flag also filmed us for their video. So in the middle of their video, there's gonna be El Chilito there in the Chivo app waving the El Salvadorian flag, uh, which I, I just think is, is just so funny. They're going to all the little towns, uh, probably all the villages too, and you know, educating and training people on how to use the Chivo app, which I think is a good thing, by the way. I think having people here training and showing everyday people how to use the app is good. So good on the people here for doing that. It's a good step in the right direction. All right, hey man. Hey. What's your name? My name is Orlando. Orlando. Uh, I'm Elmer. I was just recognized here walking around and uh, these two kids came up and said, oh, I recognize you from Twitter. It's like, that's amazing. Uh, okay, well, that's been the first time I've been uh, recognized. And we just got these stickers celebrating the 200th um, year anniversary, which is so cool. While I was there, I was contacted by the news, the largest news in the entire country. They invited me. Uh, to come back to San Salvador and uh, be on both their Instagram and their website and their physical print edition. Now, this is something that actually rolled up steam with this first interview. I ended up being on uh, Times Magazine. I ended up being on um, a few other publications. Vice contacted me. Here is that experience. Just the phone right now. I'm being picked up here by a reporter named Ricardo for the local news in El Salvador. So they're interviewing me about misinformation surrounding Bitcoin here in San Salvador. So I'm gonna go to the news station, talk about it. I didn't realize that it was gonna be video. I thought it was just gonna be like a written story, but uh, nope, going on the news. So we'll see exactly what that's like. All right. Hola. How's hey man. On? I'm with <laughs> Ricardo right now and um, he's bringing me to the news station. I'm seeing along the road all kinds of uh, spray paint and um, no Bitcoin uh, symbols that are against a lot of the walls. Um. All right, so we're in the main newsroom here and I'm trying to be a little quiet and sensitive because I don't want to disturb the people here working on a Saturday. I feel bad that they're at work, but there's always work to be done. So here we are. Hi. All right, I won't wave at them. <laughs> All right, so I just got uh, mic'd up and this is the video studio. The name of the program is called The Q and I don't know how to say that in Spanish, but Q, sorry, <laughs> don't worry. <don't, don't. laughs> I've never been uh, on a program before, so we'll see how badly I embarrass myself, <laughs> but Boy Scout try. Uh, one of the first things I said in my interview and on my Twitter is look, I'm not an expert. I'm just an enthusiast. I'm a YouTuber. I make content around this topic. Uh, and of course, when they <laughs> made the, the video, they put, you know, cryptocurrency expert in Spanish. Now, I do want to say there are good things about the Chivo app, and it, it is important to mention that. So one of the things that's good about it is if you have a small amount of money, if you're going to keep like 10 bucks, 20 bucks in there, no problem. If you have a smartphone, if you're at a location that accepts Bitcoin, which most places don't, right now, although they are mandated to by law, they must. Although again, it's not like people are going around and getting arrested like Mario Gomez did. But you know, it, it's, it's not as draconian as you might expect it to be based on some of the history of the country and also of Nayib Bukele. But regardless, the point is Chivo has some application and there are wonderful elements of the Chivo app, all of which, by the way, I talked about in my training videos telling people why they needed to leave the Chivo ecosystem, but it does have its use, especially if you want to easily change your Bitcoin into US dollars. That, that is a very easy process with that app. So I originally came to El Salvador to see El Zante, the Bitcoin beach. And that was a few weeks ago. And I knew after I'd left that the currency Bitcoin would be implemented here. And uh, that was September 6th or 7th, I believe. Um, and I knew that I wanted to come back and experience that firsthand because I thought it would be a historic event to, to capture and to show the Bitcoin community uh, what it looks like. And how do you evaluate the first few days of Bitcoin in Salvador? Based on just the few days that I've been here, it has been less a launch 
and more a crash. What, what do you think has failed? What do you think makes it crash? The promise of Bitcoin in El Salvador is for people to have access to a peer-to-peer -peer currency, one that they can exchange, one that they can have control over. And that has been the opposite of what has occurred. No one here has control of their money. They don't have access to the keys of their crypto. People are unable to go to the store to buy lunch, to buy a pupusa. You're not able to. The app doesn't work. People are not able to go to ATMs. So every element of this launch has failed. And as someone who supports Bitcoin, I'm looking at what's happening and thinking, this is not, this is not Bitcoin. All this is is pushing people to use fiat currency even more because the Bitcoin side of it is so fundamentally broken. For a crypto enthusiast, what would an ideal implementation of Bitcoin in a country look like? I think when you mandate people to accept something so new and so volatile and so risky, that's, that's a big ask. And the argument against that is, well, people here can accept Bitcoin and they can convert it into USD. But that's a simplistic way to look at it. The reality is that you're a taxpayer here and your money is being used to make a gamble. I love Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin is going to do very well. I think that the gamble will pay off. But this is a slot machine. And I think there are some reasonable objections to a governmental body or a country mandating the use of a currency for the purpose of a payout, even if I think that slot machine is going to hit. Ricardo is showing me this uh, beautiful green area outside of the news station. And Inside, he showed me all the printing presses that are still active. They're, they're producing somewhere around 100,000 uh, issues every single day. They need to get them out. Yep. So now we're walking around, and in front of me, which you can't see, it's a train car. And I'm sure you're going to explain yep. so this is what that is. This is from the 19th century. This is one of the original train cars that brought paper into the country huh. when the whole newspaper industry started. So it's a reminder where we come from and what we're doing today. It's fascinating. Yeah, from importing paper in an old train car to protecting democracy. It's a long process. It's amazing. Thank you so yes. much oh, thank for you. showing me all thank this. You. These are the big tanks. And I'm guessing the colors you have here are CMYK. Yep, that's the colors we have here. So look at this. This is a banner of the president bringing in the armed military to force his opposition to pass a law that he wanted. And I think the exact quote is, I think we know who is in charge now, gentlemen. You have one week. Yep, that's what he said. Pretty scary. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty scary. scary. You have a lot of... Just every single poll has no Bitcoin signs on it. Yeah. So Ricardo, I heard that there's a only minority 3% that's against Bitcoin. It, how, where is that number coming from? Um, so when we kind of first started, like this term two years ago, there was a survey that said that that said that 97% um, of the country supported him. And he started using that as a way to minimize and, and ridicule the, the opposition and all his critics. He was saying like, oh yeah, they're the only 3%, so it doesn't matter what they say because they're the 3%. And they're still using that figure, and it, it's very unlikely that it is as high because when you govern, it is expected that you lose popularity sure. because of your because of your decisions and everything. But they still keep the ninety seven percent narrative, and it doesn't really apply to matters in general, and it certainly doesn't apply to Bitcoin. But they still use it because it was powerful to say we're ninety seven percent versus three percent who don't like Bukele. But Bitcoin has attracted more opposition than Bukele himself, so. It's, it's not true. That's pretty uh, fascinating because all over Twitter and Reddit and everywhere I'm seeing the figure, it's only 3% of people in this country against Bitcoin. And I've always wondered, well, where is that number coming from? Whenever I ask someone, they, they don't respond. Yeah. Uh, it'd be nice to know, and now we know that it has nothing to do with Bitcoin whatsoever. I don't know how
Cause every time I bump right into you, I get all tongue tied. Want you to know me, but I'm way too shy. I can't just go around admitting that it's you I like. I wish that I had guts enough to flirt a little, but I'm too scared I'll fail. I wish that. Now, as I got more and more attention on me, people who were very, very pro-government, they would perceive me as being anti-government because I didn't like how Bitcoin was implemented, which any sane person should not, especially any sane person who is pro-Bitcoin. What they would do to try to silence me, harass me, and uh, you know, frankly harm me was they would go into many of my tweets and tag the police, tag immigration and tag um, President Bukele. So Bukele definitely saw me because I was getting tagged a lot while I was in that country. The great irony here is when I was doing my research <laughs> in El Salvador, a name came up. That name is Lorenzo Ray. When El Salvador decided to create their cryptocurrency wallet, Chivo, you need to get a guy who really understood crypto, who was a promoter, who knew the industry, who could help things get started, and who was willing to work for them. And they found a man named Lorenzo Rey. Now, this is not public. This was El Faro that published the connection between the El Salvadorian government and Lorenzo Rey. Now, who is Lorenzo Rey? It's a great question. That's what I asked. Here's who he is. This is a man who was working for the cryptocurrency known as Dash. While he was at Dash, his job was to onboard merchants across Venezuela, which by the way, is where he's from. A study was done and proved that a significant portion of the locations that were onboarded by Ray's team were non-existent. It was uncovered that Lorenzo Ray's team was falsifying financial records about what their salaries were. When I found all this out, the first thing I did was put it all out there. When you think about it, it's pretty wild that I was being accused of being politically involved in El Salvador, while the El Salvadorian government hired a non-national who was involved with defrauding cryptocurrency to build an app where all the information is private. By the way, Chivo is a privately owned company. Nothing about it is public. Think about what that means. Taxpayers in the country of El Salvador are paying the salaries of employees at Chivo. Employees, by the way, that are not disclosed, including Lorenzo Rey. Lorenzo Rey, who's involved at a high level of that team, falsifying records and defrauding a cryptocurrency in the past. The profit that's generated by Chivo, what happens with that? If Bitcoin goes up to a million dollars, which I believe it will, will that money go back to El Salvador? Will it go back to the taxpayers who are paying for the salaries of Chivo, who are paying to have the app developed, who are paying for the ATM fees, which are quote unquote free, they really come from the fund setup of taxpayer money to cover everything. And what happens when that fund runs out? These are those questions I was referring to at the news station. These are the long-term, complicated, murky, and dark questions 
that are not answered here. Meanwhile, we have <laughs> golf claps of Bitcoin supporters who are celebrating Bitcoin in El Salvador, a form of Bitcoin that is mandated by force, which has at least one political arrest tied to it, which is paid for like a socialist communist government by the people of the country. Now we can get all worked up here, but it is worth noting that there are benefits still to Bitcoin in El Salvador. No one is taking that away. Individuals will have options that they didn't have before, access to digital currency, which they didn't have before. So there are really positive things, not including the most obvious, which is individuals that get some Bitcoin, even the $30, that is gonna grow pretty substantially over time. At least I think so. So it's Monday 13th at 10.30 a.m. And it's been some time since I've jumped on my vlogging camera here. Uh, so much has been going on. One of the things that happened today is I'm now front page of the largest news outlet in the country of El Salvador, which is called the Diary de Hoy. So uh, let me show you. I have a great domain, which is elsalvador.com, and here I am. So if we go to it, you can see this article uh, they put up about me with a very handsome picture. <laughs> that article will be in the link to the description of this video, and I'll probably have it translated into English, but basically it's me expressing pretty much everything I'm expressing in this video, except obviously ran through the media, so it's a little bit more brief. They did a pretty good job representing what I wanted to say. And also what they did, uh, they tweeted me on Twitter. Now this is a big account. They have 800,000 something followers. And they do this thing called Abro Hilo, which is basically like a Twitter thread of videos of me replying to myself. And each one is 10 to 30 seconds, me expressing one of the five problems that I've seen with the implementation of Bitcoin. Why am I wearing this? There's no one around me. What is the advantage of the? So there you go. And as you can see, my Twitter is just blowing up. I have 7,000 followers now. I came down here with 700 followers, um, but the story about me has been breaking. I found that I've been not just on this news source, but other news articles and little podcasts have been talking about me. Uh, people are really happy with me discussing these topics because they feel that when they try to discuss it, uh, it gets gaslighted. We already saw that in this video. We saw that with that, uh, I think his name is Jose. <laughs> Actually, look at this, this is funny. So in one of my little um, Avro Elo parts, I guess, um, I discuss influencers manipulating the information. Uh, again, like that guy Jose, who took my drone shot and said, false, that has nothing to do with Bitcoin. And then I just destroyed him with the scenes <laughs> that I edited together of the Bitcoin rally, the same one that's in this video. But, uh, <laughs> In that part where I talk about influencers manipulating information, um, I, I was kind of a jerk. I said, psst, talking about you, <laughs> tagged the guy who's responsible for manipulating a lot of the information here. I know, I know, I had to do it. I'm not gonna pick on him anymore, but my goal with this video is just to state my experiences and state the facts that I come across. I'm trying to be open-minded, right? I've said multiple times that all the problems that are happening with the Chivo app right now, they could be fixed tomorrow, today, even an hour from now. And the second they're fixed, I promise I will be the first person on Twitter tweeting, hey, they fixed it, good job, right? In my videos, I have explicitly stated that there are advantages of the Chivo app. For example, being able to easily convert USD into Bitcoin. So I'm trying to not, you know, poke the hornet's nest, but who knows what could happen. I am in a foreign country. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna call the um, embassy now. We'll see how that goes. And then after that, uh, we're gonna go to a Chivo ATM and we're going to record her son trying to get money out of the Chivo ATM. Now that scares me because all the Chivo ATMs have armed military in front of them. And there was a journalist from Vice. He was, I'll, I'll put the tweet up here. He was detained temporarily. They came up to him and forced him to delete all of his photos off of his camera that he took of a Chivo app from a public location, which is legal in this country. They forced him to delete all of the photos. And then after that, what they did is they made him go through the camera and prove that all the images were in fact deleted. Luckily for him, he was able to recover a few of them. So I'll be going there. I'm not gonna record it with this nice camera and it'll look so beautiful. I'm gonna do it on my phone actually as a live stream. So if anything happens, you know, everyone can see. But I am scared because I'm not trying to do a gotcha moment. I'm not intentionally trying to make Chivo look bad. I just want to have footage of him going to the ATM and taking money out. And if it works, that's 
as equally important will be in my video as if it doesn't work. We found the Chivo ATM and we have $40 that we want to try to withdraw. So let's find out what it's actually like. Okay. Okay. She said that we can try one. So here's how it works. We're going to do BTC. We can write 10. So 10 is the minimum? Yeah. Okay. So let's try 10. So now that's the code that you scan to confirm. Okay. All right, there it worked. Looks like it got the money. Now that amount was $9.85, not $10, right? So let's see what comes out of the machine. $10. Yeah. Hey, it worked. We learned a lot from this experience. The first thing we learned is that you do get your money, $10. I've been hearing on Twitter from everywhere that the ATMs are broken, that you can't withdraw from them, that they're running out of cash. And I've seen videos of that. With that said, my experience has been that it, it worked. Who pays the ATM fee? I don't know. We don't know. You don't know? No. Okay. So there's always fees, right? There's nothing free in the world. Uh, also, Rolando is saying, uh, I have a problem. When I send an amount to another wallet and the transaction is on hold, do they have a solution for that? Uh, money is getting stuck in tons of people's wallets. Pending. Did that amount I ever... Pending. Really? Are you serious? Hold on. Pending. This can't be. September 9, still pending. Pending, wow. Uh, no, we transferred money out of your Chivo app yeah. into my Lightning app. Yeah. And it's been pending since September 9th. Javier says the transaction fees are paid from the Bitcoin Trust, which is funded by public funds. The they trust has $150 million, which will, uh, but this trust will someday, someday run out of uh, money. Maybe they just uh, ask for more, more money to that fund. What is it really that causes people to mistrust Bitcoin in El Salvador? We've touched on some of the reasons, but what else could it be? Every time we log on Twitter, we get new notifications that Nayib Bukele is buying the dip. So far, $150 million were put into a public trust to cover the fees, the Bitcoin fees, and over $500 million has been spent on buying Bitcoin. Now, making a claim like that in a video like this, it would be a good idea at the bottom to give some kind of source. The only problem is, there is none. The reason is that all of the public funds that are being used are not disclosed. And the Bitcoin that's being purchased with that is going into a private wallet that no citizens in El Salvador are able to see, not even on the blockchain. The blockchain is a ledger, it's a record of transactions. All of this information is invisible. There's also the idea of opportunity cost. There's also the idea of opportunity cost. The hundreds of millions of dollars that are being used to purchase Bitcoin, to fund the Chivo wallet, the team, the staff, the salaries, the infrastructure, the ATMs, all of the military used to guard these ATMs and more, theoretically could be going to other locations. Theoretically could be used for improving other aspects of the society, such as the hospital system, which as I'm aware, deeply needs more government could be used to improve the infrastructure of the country, including the medical system, including the educational system. I'm not against new technologies being invested into, but I am pointing out that there is a logical reason as to why people would be hesitant to investing hundreds of millions of dollars in a small country that does not have a giant GDP, that has frankly very lacking infrastructure, that has a lacking medical system, has lacking education, and is being put on a gamble. For a wallet, by the way, that the public doesn't have any oversight or access to. The one public university in El Salvador has a $15 million less budget this year than it did last year. More funds are being diverted to cryptocurrency. That society has the choice to do that. Point here is we shouldn't minimize the objections that citizens in that country have and dismiss it as them not getting it. They get it perfectly well. And even if you agree that investing in Bitcoin is long-term the right thing for that country to do, which it probably is, you can't deny that the implementation, that the private wallet that has no public oversight, that has no independent committee overseeing in a country with effectively one political party, that should scare the hell out of you. As long as the private wallet that's holding all of the alleged Bitcoin remains invisible and private and unverifiable on the blockchain, I don't trust it. Let's get back to the basics here. Verify, don't trust. 
If all it takes to get a free pass is a laser eye profile photo and a backwards baseball cap, then I've got a thousand Bitcoins myself. Let's say that this guy over here, her son, has a motorcycle shop and he makes his entire living off of selling these motorcycles and he has a family to support. Put yourself into his shoe. Imagine if someone comes into his shop that wants to buy a motorcycle and they're using a Chivo app. Now he's educated. He knows that he should never use a Chivo app. He knows that he should use a non-custodial app like the Moon Wallet or Mun Wallet. But the person coming in, they have Chivo. So he doesn't have a choice. He, he must accept the cryptocurrency and he can't tell the person buying it that he won't accept the Chivo. So they come in and they buy a $5,000 motorcycle from him. Now he can see that the money has left the Chivo app. He can see it, it says pending, but the money doesn't come into his. What should he do? Should he just let the guy take the $5,000 motorcycle that his livelihood is depending on? Even though the money not only is not in his account, but it doesn't even show as pending. It doesn't show as a pending transaction. Should he let the guy walk away with his money? Should he, you know, lock the guy in the motorcycle shop? I mean, it's been five days. So is that kidnapping at that point? What should he do? So the problem that we have here is we're forcing a mandate for people to use a cryptocurrency that can't be used to transmit funds under $5 as of this moment in time. And that shows as pending, but will not show as pending in the app of the merchant receiving the money. And unfortunately, what I just described to you isn't just a thought experiment. Let's continue. In another international caller, his name is Mark Falson. Uh, he's on the line in San Salvador. So I am in um, El Salvador, and I came here to experience the change over to Bitcoin. The word on the street here is it's not working. And when you go on Twitter and Reddit, all you're seeing are posts about how these social media influencers are down here using their wallets and going to Starbucks and having a great time. Mm -hmm. The problem is that the Chivo app, which is what the citizens here have, cannot be used for microtransactions. Hard stop. You can't go to Starbucks with the Chivo app as of right now and order a $1 coffee. It doesn't work. Why is it not being used for microtransactions? So that's a, a great question. And the only person that can answer that question is Bukele. It's always been so sad for me to see Bitcoin people who you would like to think know better, but there's like this new generation of Bitcoin people who are all about number go up and they don't care about the individual empowerment of uh, cryptocurrency. And they're like, yeah, go, uh, you know, President Bukele, he's the man. I mean, this guy's another little tyrant, just like the rest of them all around the planet. You know, we shouldn't be getting cozy with, uh, with politicians, those of us who actually care about advancing crypto. But that's just, you know, the editorial comment. I didn't know Mark Falson, but I, I did know of him because he was one of the people who was down in El Salvador. And I was looking around earlier this week on Monday, mm -hmm. like, all right, we know this is the government mandating people taking Bitcoin, or at least that's the way it seems. That's right. the way the law is written, although the president is saying, oh, no, it's not a mandate. You don't have to take it. And the government is launching its own wallet called Chivo. And you know if the government's behind a piece of technology, it's going to be garbage. He is, certainly. So you knew this was going to be a disaster on day number one. So I'm like, all right, I got. there's got to be somebody out there who's you know showing us what's happening. And I'm just shocked that this disaster is taking so long to land. The yeah. Chivo app was shut down on day Day number one, not even halfway through the day, it was like noon, and the president put the pressed the pause button and froze the entire app. Wait, so um, so Chivo is a custodial wallet? Oh yeah, they got control over this entire system. Uh, That's what I was saying. They literally hit the pause button on this wallet on day number one, Peakless. They told people, okay, come on in and use this thing. Nope, wait, you can't use it. Taxpayers so, are covering the Bitcoin network fees? Wow. One of the problems with the anti-Bitcoin march here and the portrayal of it online is these people are against Bitcoin. They're not. Look at my Twitter. Look at what people are tweeting at me. They're not against Bitcoin. They're against the implementation. They're against the fact that taxpayer money that could be used for other purposes is going to fund a private company. Mm -hmm. And what hap again, what happens with the profit? There's a lot of questions here that are unanswered. Even if the problems with the Chivo app in the short term are resolved, such as blocking five dollar and below transactions there's still bigger problems and questions that need to be answered that uh is just not part of the reason that i decided to stay in el salvador for more than 72 hours is because there was another demonstration coming on september 15th and was also about uh, more topics it wasn't exclusive to bitcoin bitcoin was a big part of it but there were other grievances such as the firing of judges things that we went over uh, kind of at the beginning of this video. So my plan was to go there and document it just like I had done before, get drone shots, 
talk to people about Bitcoin, get videos of people protesting Bitcoin, everything that would paint a picture for this video on what is actually going on in El Salvador with regards to Bitcoin. At first, everything was calm. But then, something happened. See, a group of journalists were formed around the Chivo ATM. Most of the Chivo ATMs in the country had armed guards outside of it. Just like the ones who made the Vice News reporter delete the photos of the Chivo ATM he took. In this case, the guards were there, but standing far away watching. These journalists were surrounding the Chivo ATM and a small group of three to five individuals. As I approached, I noticed one of the individuals took a ottoman that was on fire and put it inside of the Chivo ATM building to burn it down. No, mammy. Mammy, no, no, mammy. No violence! No violence! At that moment, I thought it was over. But that same individual I saw put it in after I walked away came back and did it again. This caused a fire that got international media attention. While I was taking it out, people were yelling, burn him, referring to me. And I've had people ask me since then if I was scared in that moment. The answer is no, because it was only three to five random rogue people in a sea of protesters, 10 to 20,000 of them, who all recognized me. And knew me from Twitter or television or the newspaper. I'm pointing this out to clarify that these individuals acted separately from the protesters. One of Bukele's own staff members tweeted the video saying that a foreigner stood up to the protesters. The thing is with protests, you can never control what individuals do. One rogue, violent individual does not stand for all of the protesters. Nor does me removing the burning couch from the building stand for me making a political statement. But I recognize that no matter what I do, it can be construed by anyone to mean whatever they want it to mean. So that's when I started to escape. I got to the hotel and packed up everything I had. I had no ticket. We rushed to the airport. We got there and booked the first ticket that was to Los Angeles. Our heart was pounding as we were racing to the airplane, not knowing at any moment what could happen. With our ticket in hand, we rushed to the airplane and... Let's take a little risk. Sure, of course. I'd love that. Very nice meeting you. Yeah, take care, man. Take care. Thank you so much. Hope to see you soon. Man, everyone's recognizing me. <laughs> more peaceful place than we were. I'm in Los Angeles right now. I'm walking around Echo Park. Once I got here, the real reason I came is to clear my head on everything that happened in El Salvador. We left the country pretty quickly, out of the blue, and the reason we 
left the country is because of the last protest where I pulled out the burning futon couch. It wasn't a political act, but I still would have done that anywhere. We hopped on a plane and the only place available nonstop that was leaving, you know, within an hour, we had to rush to the airport. Couldn't even get footage of us. It was like a spy movie, just throwing, Joanne, just get everything in the bag. Just get it in, let's go, let's go. And we got there just in the nick of time. Well, it's been a, a day. The government itself has been posting the video, including, I'll put the tweet on the screen, whoever this guy is, showing that, hey, even foreigners are telling the protesters not to be violent. And they're kind of using me as a way to show the protesters as being very bad and very destructive. The protesters are using me to say, hey, that was actually a government agent and you made the government angry by trying to stop them. Now, what I'll say is, just to have clarity, I'm not saying either of those things. What I'm saying is, during my time there and the footage that I got, with the number of people that were there, we saw no violence at all. And the only time there was violence or destruction or chaos was with one individual who was wearing a red hat, who appeared in my video, who was the person who was throwing the burning futon or couch or whatever into the building. It looks like a lot of people are surrounding me, but again, all of those people were journalists. It doesn't matter who those protesters were. It doesn't matter whether they were really anti-government protesters or if they were government false flag implants, or if they were just people who came to the protest under the guise of a cause, but really were malicious, chaotic people and just wanted to destroy what you get at protests. What matters is that that was the only incident that people could point to as violence, you know? And then one woman is the one that broke the glass. Unfortunately, what's being uh, discussed from the government side is how bad the protesters were and how violent and chaotic. And of course, that's not true. And of course, on the other side, you have the opposition who's saying that it's all government plants and it's all this, it's all, you know, manipulated. And I don't, you know, it's not my call to say if that's true or that's not true. I'm being kind of used as an example for each. My opinion on this is it sort of doesn't matter what the intention of those individuals were. The end result is sort of the same, which is people are gonna use my voice however they want. And my kind of feelings in life are that I should do the right thing. And for me, pulling the fire out was the right thing. And when you- They didn't succeed. <laughs> I didn't succeed, they put it right back in. But the point is, I always try to do the right thing, what I think is right. And when you become media literate, you realize that even when you do things that are right, it's going to be used against you. No good deed goes unpunished. This was supposed to be just a silly, fun video. Of course, it got way more complicated than that. What I want people to get out of this video is that Bitcoin in El Salvador is significantly more complicated than it's made out to be. But I have BTC, I have Bitcoin Cash, I have XLM, I have AVA, I have a bunch of different cryptos. So for me, having adoption is awesome. Because not only will Bitcoin go up, which helps me, but there's always spill off into the other coins, which helped me too, the altcoin. But I think what we've learned from this experiment is the ends don't justify the means. And the devil's in the details. I do want to return to El Salvador. I do intend to return to El Salvador. I hope that I'm welcomed into El Salvador. Also another thing, and I should mention this, I rushed out of it and I did feel unsafe. But to the credit of the government in El Salvador, that could have just all been me. We never had any indication that we were in trouble. Customs agents let us right through immigration. No problem. No issues at all. No stoppages. Every official. I imagine it. Right. Well, that's exactly <laughs> right. Everything was perfectly calm and friendly and nice. Any worry could have all been in my head. That said, I was scared and I really believe that I have reason to be. But it is worth mentioning because I do want to give fairness. You could say that what they're doing is very beneficial to people there, but the real story, as I found, and as you've seen, is a lot more complicated and needs a lot more rational thought and discussion around it than simply number go up.
thank you for watching my documentary. This video, as I've stated before, has been 100% funded through independent donations of people who are like me, people who are excited about cryptocurrency and the future of it on this world. As you can imagine, going to El Salvador was not an inexpensive endeavor. Not only did I need to hire people to help me down there, get hotels, pay for food, go to the demonstrations, talk with people, go to uh, El Zante, do all the things that I needed to do, but there's also the costs that you don't see, such as camera equipment, editing software, things of that nature. It is my hope that I can continue doing videos like this, visiting other countries that are implementing cryptocurrency, such as El Salvador, in Panama, and many other countries. I want to approach this not as an outsider and not as a reporter. I don't want to be distant. I want to be involved. I want to see and experience everything firsthand and share my experience with you just as I did here. Even if those experiences don't align with what I want them to be, that happens as it happened with El Salvador. So any support from my viewers like you is not just deeply appreciated, but also allows me to continue making videos such as this one. This isn't PBS, I don't have a tote bag to give you, but you are able to go below and click the link for felzon.fans to leave a donation and leave a little message on there or leave it anonymous. But again, all of these donations will allow me to fund these kinds of very difficult, time-consuming and expensive uh, video documentaries. I don't trust the mainstream media to be able to cover these topics in depth. They may have some reporters down there who give very surface level, one page, headline, clickbait articles, but there's not many people that are going to places, staying there long term, really examining things up close, and I want to do that. So once again, your funding and donations and support, even just sharing this video, uh, allow me to continue making this kind of work, which I believe is valuable, and I hope you do as well. So I want to thank you once again for coming along with me in El Salvador. This has been one heck of a trip, and I will see you guys soon.